Hi, this is Jason Aarons with Dimension Data, and I want to talk a little bit about spanless recording. Um, previously, if we wanted to call record a telephone, um, we would configure a span trunk on a switch and copy all the packets from the phone uh, to uh, another device. In this case, I'm going to introduce uh, spanless recording. And what's going to happen here is I've got a Zoom call recording device that I'm going to set a SIP trunk up. I'm going to then create an application user that uh, manages or monitors the agent's phones and uh, the call recording device through the SIP trunk and the CTI uh, can actually tell the phones to make a copy of their packets with the built-in bridge and send them to the uh, SIP trunk which uh, is registered to the call recording device. Um, so this eliminates having to do spam uh, and it's a fairly new feature in Call Manager so I'm just going to give an overview of how to set it up in Cisco Call Manager. Um, the first step is uh, create an application user um, so I go into user management application user and uh, here I created a user called uh, Campbell Zoom Call Recording. Um, if I click on this user I just made his password 12345. The control devices this is actually a list of the phones that we want to enable uh, Zoom to monitor uh, for call recording. And lastly at the bottom yeah, with any uh, CTI you have to enable standard CTI allow call park monitoring allow call recording and standard CTI enabled. Um, the next step uh, after creating the application users is to, um, if you wanted to configure tones for recording, Call Manager does have uh, the capability to be of tones. I'm not going to cover that. It is optional. The next step is to create a recording profile. So if you go to device, device settings, and you take a look down here at recording profiles, I created a recording profile that's the same as, uh, kind of the same name camp uh, zoom call recording uh, recording profiles what RP stands for in this case you have to give it a destination address and then set a calling search space um, after you create the recording profile you're going to assign it to the device so now I'm going to find the agent phone I'm going to go to device phone and in this case this is agent Dan I click on agent Dan and basically there's two things uh, on the phones that I need to configure. One is I need to turn on the built-in bridge, which is on the device information uh, for the phone. And then secondly, on the line, I need to enable the uh, call recording and the call recording profile. Um, so the first step again was enabling the built-in bridge. You go down about halfway, turn the built-in bridge on, the default is off. Uh, you can also use bulk administration to update your agent lines. And then the second piece is to actually go into the line uh, that you want to be able to call record on and uh, turn on call recording and assign the recording profile uh, to that device. Uh, so if I scroll down and again the second step, I want to at the very bottom recording option. I want to change that from disabled to automatic call recording enabled and then I want to match the recording profile to match the recording profile you created in the previous step. Hit save and then apply config. Uh, the next step is to create a trunk. So we'll go to device trunk and this is actually going to be our SIP trunk back to the call recording device. In this case it's a uh, zoom device. And I just gave it a name. Um, inbound calls, I do want the calling search space set. But most importantly, with any uh, SIP trunk, you need the destination address. The port in this case is 5060 according to the vendor. Uh, non secure profile and a standard SIP profile. Um, after you create the SIP trunk, uh, it's optional. You can either create a route pattern for the recorder or you can create a uh, route group, route list, and then assign the route pattern uh, to the recorder.
So if I go to um, call routing, uh, route hunt, again you can either make a route group if you have multiple call recording devices. Um, in this case I only have a single call recording device. So I've got a route pattern that the call recorder has been, uh, been assigned to. In this case, if I dial 4210, 3211, it should go down that SIP trunk uh, to the call recording device. So I've got a route pattern, and then I've got the gateway pointed straight to the SIP trunk. Um, under uh, system services, there's a couple parameters for uh, SIP trunks in general. Uh, one is we need to enable the built-in bridge. The uh, two is the SIP Express timer it needs to be increased from the default 180,000 seconds. And then lastly, uh, restart the SIP trunk. And at that point, the uh, Zoom call recording application uh, would need the username that we set up, the password, and uh, as well as the recording number. And uh, basically, what it should happen is, is when it wants to record an agent phone call. It dials the SIP trunk number uh, 4210, uh, 3211. Uh, at that point, it answers it and begins recording the uh, RTP audio uh, that's being sent from the built-in bridge on the phone. And that's a, a brief overview of uh, Zoom call recording fanless using a SIP trunk. I'll show the settings here in the uh, built-in bridge. So built-in bridge default is off, needs to be set to on, and then SIP Express. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, it's expired, right? SIP expires. And the SIP expires timer, I bumped up from 180,000 uh, to the maximum 300,000. At that point, I restarted the trunk and uh, everything was good for uh, call recording.